Welcome to our championship coaches panel for extremely successful Fordham programs featured today. Emmanuel Barbari with you, joined by Fordham men's soccer head coach, Carlo Aquista, Fordham women's soccer head coach, Jessica Clinton, Fordham baseball's Kevin Layton, and Fordham softball's Melissa Inouye. Well, we have two fall sports, two spring sports, but the twist this year is you all played in the spring. So let's start here. When you got the news in the fall that there wouldn't be any competition going on on campus, what were some of the ways that you were able to keep your team fresh? Let's start with you, Carlo. Uh, we just kept on, I guess, playing, having competition during training, training sessions, um, making it fun, keeping it loose. Um, and every day was just a, a pleasure to be out there, to be fair, right? You just never knew if you get shut down or uh, with, you know, the COVID testing and protocols, what would happen. So for us in the fall, I kept it very loose. Uh, players got to get to know each other and we had a lot of competition weekly. So we thought it went pretty well. How about you, Jessica? How'd it go for your team? I, I thought it was a great fall season. You know, when you get the news, like that it, it can be devastating but our mantra throughout the I guess the whole shutdown from March was the team that's going to be the most successful is the team that stays connected so regardless of whatever challenges we were facing as a group our goal was to remain connected and like Carlo competitive when we could be um, so it was a lot of zoom calls it was a lot of team bonding team culture moments and a lot of bringing in our first years that we rarely have an opportunity to do in the fall season because of how quick things go. Melissa, as I understand it, you did some intra-squad scrimmages, competed against yourselves to stay loose. How was that? Yeah, and in a normal year, Manny, we would have been able to play eight fall games, but unfortunately with COVID and everything shutting things down, you know, and we returned our same team from 2019, uh, 2020, our 16, we had 16 returners and we only added three new uh, freshmen. So if anything, it was a kind of the same team, but just kind of taking it up a notch. But yeah, much like Carlo and Jess, we just did a lot of competition. Um, and I think there was a newness of uh, passion again for the game of softball, right? Because it was taken away from us in the middle of March. Um, unfortunately, March 12th isn't great in, in all of our heads. Um, but yeah, I would say our team was definitely more passionate about the game and more grateful for every opportunity they got on the field together. And, and Kevin, that was a unique twist that in the spring you were in the middle of playing and then that's when the pandemic kind of hit and halted everything and then it kind of carried into the fall. So what, what was the collective reaction of your team uh, throughout all of that? Uh, I mean, honestly, you know, clearly last year was devastating for the guys and and every sport involved, you know, being in season uh, just is incredibly um, difficult. And just, you know, when everything is taken away from you, that uh, drop of a hat like that, it was just uh, you didn't have words um, to say to, you know, kind of more or less console some of the guys. Um, but, yeah, the fall for us, I mean, it was, I think, like like uh, Carlos said, I mean, it was, and, and Melissa, it was just nice to be back and be around the guys and be on the field uh, competing. Uh, the challenge, I think, was just the unknown. You know, um, is this week, you know, the number is going to go up or is somebody going to uh, get sick? Um, are we going to play this spring? You know, I think going into winter break, there was a lot of unknowns, and I think that was the only thing you know, real challenge for us. Otherwise, majority of the fall was fairly um, routine as, as what we normally do. Jessica, you mentioned it before how the connectivity was such a big factor in keeping your team on the same page. Also, when you weren't competing back in March, just keeping the team together. For all of you, what did you maybe learn about your team throughout this whole process in this past year that you didn't know prior? Well, I'll jump in that they are really great connectors better than I thought they were. So they, our group has a passion for one another and care about each other, but the way they connected, the way they checked in with everything that was going on, whether it was the pandemic or whether it was what's going on in the world or what's going on in our country, um, we saw a real jump in how they started to take care of each other and lean on one another which then added to not only serious conversations and genuine deep down um, connectivity on top of 
you know, them hosting, wearing like their prom dresses on a Zoom, you know, in finding a balance between how do they really work together, but also find the fun in it. I think for our group, it was, um, it confirmed that they're just amazing young women that have a bright future ahead of them whether it was getting involved in their communities or um, trying to get ahead for an internship, um, but really just, and they were also creative. I think they got together and did like a 5K, um, you know, they would meet up in Jersey, uh, socially distance, of course, at the time, right? Um, but I think they just, you know, really wanted to stay connected. I think it confirmed to me that they're very routine oriented and that they hated not having structure. Um, I think that just confirmed a couple of things for, uh, for our team. I would agree. I mean, it just uh, showed me how resilient our guys are. Um, you know, they they battled and um, you know fought all the way to the end. And I, I think it it showed everyone, you know, especially uh, our guys, you know, going through this is a unique situation. And um, you know, to to have everything that you really work for for uh, most of your life as a college um, athlete be taken away. Um, you know, I, I saw that. Um, our guys wanted to just keep playing. You know, a lot of times you see that out of your seniors and, um, you know, all of our guys um, did not want the season to end, so. Yeah, for us, um, it was great to see one player actually opted out of the fall. And three weeks in, he shows up. He goes, I'm here, I'm ready, to, you know, I'm gonna, finish this, I'm gonna finish this season out in the fall with the team. So, I think that at that moment for me defined a little bit of where, where we were heading and the direction we were going as a group. Um, and then once we were able to fill in January with, you know, one or two uh, transfers that came in and it kind of all came together um, very nicely. So uh, going back to what they all said, it was, you know, a little bit of a connection, a little bit of a passion for each other and a little bit of resiliency. You know, uh, I learned a lot from, from the, the team this year. You all have had good things to say about how your team was able to react, but as coaches this is the first time you had to deal with a situation like this and, and kind of adapt, maybe a coaching philosophy, adapt on the fly. Carlo, let's start with you. What were some of the adaptations you had to make in the first year like this in your life? You, get, you have to have a little more patience in general, you know, get to know each player a little bit more, uh, get to know the team, uh, the dynamics, um, I think what really separated us a little bit is the group was, worked with a professional um, mindset performance coach, Kristen Flagel. Uh, was the opportunity came through the athletic department, and even myself. You know, I hired uh, uh, somebody for myself, John O'Sullivan, Change the Game Project, uh, who's also a mindset professional performance coach, and that helped each and every one of us kind of, all right, take a breath. Let's work together. Let's get through this. No problem. Um, you know, we might have a bad practice and instead of chasing the training session or the practice, we kind of cancel it and say, okay, tomorrow's another day. Come back tomorrow. There were times that a couple of players, you know, needed a day off for, for whatever reason, you know, didn't really ask just, Hey, maybe some, a little small knock or just needed a day for a class or a test. Just kind of make it work. That, that kind of segues into the next phase of what I wanted to talk about with all of you the mental health aspect of all of this. Not easy, of course, to have a season shut down or the kind of start and stop nature of this year as well. Combined with everything else a student athlete already has to deal with from a mental health standpoint. Melissa, I'll throw it to you here. Uh, was there any uh, focus on mental health or implementations from the athletic department that was prominent within your team? Yeah, absolutely. I think the athletic department uh, really adjusted well to the needs of the student athletes. You know, Carlo mentioned obviously the mental performance. So we have a group sports strata, you know, we have the counseling center and Dr. Susie on campus. Um, they all also even offered um, the Headspace app for student athletes and coaches and staff members. So I think they offered a lot of resources to help the student athletes through a continued, you know, uncertain time. Um, us personally as a program, you know, our staff, uh, we continued with our biweekly player check-ins um, and that's where we really don't talk about softball. We talk about everything else outside of the um, field. And then we also implemented kind of a mental health uh, day off kind of program, if you will. We did that about in the winter time and we're a student athlete, you know, if they felt uh, they were not in the right headspace to compete that day, whether it was practice or workout, um, you know, they would simply just communicate to me the night before or morning of, and, you know, they would take the mental day off and no questions asked. 
I would check in with them later in the day, um, but that was beneficial. I would say about almost half of our team uh, took advantage of um, at least one of those days off. And, and, I, and I feel it was just really important. Um, if they weren't in the right mindset, then you know, they weren't gonna get much out of it. But yeah, mental health is definitely a concern in our program that we really try to make sure it's a priority. Yeah, I think those, you know, just piggybacking what Carla and Melissa said, it, you know, I think we've all done something along those lines, like how we meet with our players became a little extra special because it became less about sports and more about how they actually are doing. So you can't be in the confines of an office. So we would do walkie talkies. We would walk around campus together and, you know, I really logged some miles then. So that was helpful in my own mental health, but it, we would do things like that. You know, again, connection really helped with our group as far as mental health. And we were on a roller coaster throughout the year. So at any given point, we as a group were in a high or we as a group were in a low. Um, we also joined or worked with Erin McLeod and Dr. Rachel Limbaugh. They have the Mindfulness Project. Erin McLeod is a professional player and plays for the Canadian national team. And it's a well laid out kind of 12 chapter their system, which is so creative of how they laid it out. And our players really bought into the information of mindfulness of, you know, just as simple as how do you watch video on yourself without, you know, worrying about what do I look like to the point where we're talking about stretching or finding a routine that works or mindfulness coloring, like all of these great things this project had to offer. And I think it was really a good piece for us to focus on when, like on a weekly basis, it was a part of our conversations as to what our mental health was like. So it was also nice to talk about it too, because it wasn't something I think that any of us ran away from. I think we faced the challenge because it hadn't really been in our, I think our faces as much um, it was certainly a head-on challenge, but I think when you talk to any of our coaches here, it was something that we really elevated as a priority. And Kevin, whether it be during the shutdowns or the day-to-day, -day, how was your team able to stay mentally strong? Yeah, I mean, that was, I think, that one, of the, one of our big concerns, obviously, you know, about the, um, you know, the physical and, you know, especially with the pitchers, but, um, you know, when you get the news of, Hey, uh, we're not playing this weekend. Um, you know, how guys handle that was something that, uh, you know, we thought about and, and had to deal with at times, but, you know, we're just checking in with our guys, see how they're doing. Um, you know, for the most part, uh, our guys, like I said, we're, we're pretty resilient and didn't really have any real issues, um, you know, that they expressed to us. And, um, you know, I, I thought the, the university of the athletic department, uh, the Headspace app. I mean, everybody was so supportive throughout the um, throughout the year um, that we didn't have you know too many cases that I know. Of, so, with the difficulty of the past year, came different conversations about how we think about racial injustice, whether it on, it's on national scale or or a local scale within the communities or or just within your own teams. I know all of you have very diverse rosters of players on your team. So starting with Melissa, what did you take away from those discussions within the team and just everything from last June spanning until now? Yeah, I think it just gave us an opportunity to engage in deeper conversations as Jess mentioned earlier. Um, and just understanding where some people or some of our players were coming from, right? And, and allowing them to kind of voice their thoughts and feelings about it. Because if they're not okay with something off the field, then they're not gonna be, be okay with something on the field, right? And just knowing that some of these situations that occurred, um, you know, has personally affected some of them, right? Whether it's a comment from a friend or a family member or what they see on social media. But I think it's just allowed us to have deeper conversations and understand uh, maybe the upbringing and uh, the background of where some of our student athletes are from. Very similar to uh, Melissa, you know, we, 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 we had, we started conversations with the group. Also our team is from all over, you know, different areas of the world. I get think more than others on campus. Uh, and uh, they were able to get together a lot as a group and talk about social injustice and, and their own country and how they treat different things and how they kind of um, uh, deal with it. 
and it worked out really well for them. I think our group, if, if I can see, got a little bit closer and more understanding, even myself, you know, you start learning more about each player, uh, about your staff, and, and they learn more about me too. I think Melissa and Carlo really, you know, hit the nail on the head is that one, it allowed deeper conversations. We were able to learn more about our own student athletes and see them for who they are and learn about them and learn about um, what is important to them and the reasons why. Um, I think we all gained a deeper understanding and, and trust and respect for one another and why we make certain decisions or why we feel a certain way. Um, our group came together and perhaps you've seen our warm up tops with men's soccer and we have the Fordham logo on the front and you know, we talk about say their names on their sleeve and on the back we have Black Lives Matter. It, that is an important piece. I do have a team who uh, we do have women of color on our team and that then became you know, a big passion and discussion within our group uh, of how to support and how to understand. And it has continuously spread in the most positive way of, you know, other things that we're talking about, other things that are happening in this country, um, you know, the Asian hate that has gone on, you know, within this, um, you know, it's Pride Month. And, and we're talking about all these different things. And, and over the past year, it has really allowed us to get deeper and, and have our players and staff, like Carla mentioned, be more connected because we get to see each other for who we are and, and our authentic selves, which creates a much more inviting and comfortable environment. And that's what we want, I think. I think we all want that with our student athletes. Yeah, and I, I agree with everything they said. And I would say, you know, add to it just, um, you know, being when you are an athlete, you kind of jump on board uh, into a team and nobody knows anybody's background, you know, uh, where they come from and, you know, their upbringing, their family, um, all these different things that go into it that make a team. And, and I felt like this year, um, you know, the conversations allowed for us to kind of get to know each other better. Um, and that's something I think as coaches, you're always looking to improve on the culture and the chemistry of your team. And I feel like um, the more each athlete knows about each other, the, uh, the closer your team is going to be. So um, something that I think all of us learned, but also, you know, need to continue and uh, at least on our end, I feel like continue to work on with our, with our athletes. So, Well, there are two pillars to the, to the term student athlete. And the first one, of course, is student. And that's normally a big responsibility, uh, regardless of the year. Amplified, of course, this year. And the transition to remote learning presented its own set of challenges as well. Given that, let's say you're on the road for an Atlantic 10 championship, things actually might be a bit, little bit easier. You don't have to miss class. What are some of your takeaways from the year that was in academics? Was it easier? Was it harder? Uh, Jessica, start with you. I'm laughing because I, you know, our players would be walking around with laptops, right? They'd be on the bus. Thank God buses have Wi-Fi these days and hotspots are so easy. I, I just can't imagine myself going through remote learning. So I'm laughing as they were like, well, can we be in class and be on the bus? And I'm like, of course you can. Um, you know, our group, I think many of our student athletes have this, especially going to Fordham, have this overachieving, like high academic drive. Um, I, I can't say it was any easier or harder for them. I know for our pre-meds, it became a little bit more difficult because labs weren't involved in their, on their day to day. Um, they the best way I can say, I don't know how they balance, but they managed it. And our GPAs have come out really strong. I'm really proud of the group. I can't say it was easy, although it seemed at times they weren't missing classes because travel was also restricted for us anyway, right? But they handled it beautifully. And I'm really proud because it didn't matter at the end of the day what their GPA was or what their grades were but the importance was that they tried their hardest and they did their best because we knew what this year was like. Uh, same. There's also more flexibility on us, right? We understood that they're walking around with their phone, they're in a team meeting and they have, the, you know, their, 
their phone out and, and listening to the class and trying to pay attention. And, you know, we've also worked around the, their schedules as much as possible. So it was a lot of flexibility. And after doing it a couple of times, everybody was so used to it. I mean, going into uh, the Marshall game, uh, we trained the day before, which is an important training session. And we had to leave Tom, our athletic trainer back, uh, because uh, it wasn't even a class, but Josh Levine had a very big interview, right? Now it's interview season. So he comes to practice 30 minutes late, but, you know, just dealt with it. It is what it is. So it was just so many different things uh, that we had to deal with. But uh, I think I got much better at it. And I think it's going to help me in the fall as well in certain situations. I think for our, our group of student athletes, uh, they navigated as best as they could. I think some enjoyed the online learning modality. And some really uh, realize that they are more interactive, more one-on-one -on -one with the professor. Um, so some struggled at times, but for the most part, they continued to excel in the classroom. And much like Carlo, I think our student athletes did a really good job communicating when there was conflicts or when they had something due for a class they needed more time for. Um, but yeah, I, I think um, the online learning allowed for more flexibility for when you were on the road. Um, but uh, it was interesting to see them doing class in the calf. And I'm like, are you sure you're paying, paying attention? So needless to say, our GPAs have about stayed the same, but uh, they navigated as best as they could considering the um, uh, uh, continued learning modality. Yeah, I would give all, all of our athletes a ton of credit. I mean, I, I feel like uh, some of our guys expressed the challenge of, um, you know, either being distracted by um, what's going on in their room, apartment, um, and not being, you know, being uh, able to sit in a classroom with a professor's eyes on you. So I, I think like Melissa said, some um, struggled with it and some excelled with it. I would say as a professor, I, I would like to give the professors some uh, credit because, you know, it's got to be hard when you're looking at your screen of all your class and you got a couple of guys sitting in the dugout um in their you know practice gear getting you know in class and i for us for me as a coach it's i was like man i i hope uh, i hope this goes well because um you know it was something different for for everybody to deal with um but it was funny to see some of our guys sitting in class in the dugout while the other guys were stretching so um but yeah it's uh, it was an interesting year with that stuff Keep it with you, Kevin, and then move across the board from, from freshmen coming in and adapting to a difficult year or seniors who actually returned for an additional year because of COVID-19. Definitely wide-ranging effects on your programs. Before we even started the Zoom call, we were talking about uh, recruiting season, whether you're in the midst of it or, or coming up on it. What makes you optimistic about the, the future of your programs with all these lessons learned? Yeah, just, uh, I mean, I, I feel like these kids have been through so much and I, I feel like, um, you know, they, they keep pushing and, and keep excelling and, and keep finding ways to succeed. And I feel like, um, you know, for us, I, I, I said it throughout the year uh, a lot with our guys, like this year is going to be different than any year you've ever experienced. And um, I mean, there's going to be a lot of changes, a lot of um, things that we're going to have to adapt to and um, you know, I give our guys a, a lot of credit with that. And you know, I think that's something that they've learned and maybe they've even taught us that, as coaches is that they can adjust, they can adapt and, and they can be successful. And, um, you know, the next group is, you know, what challenges come their way, we don't know yet, but I'm sure that um, they'll be able to handle it the same way. Yeah, I would say resilience. Um, you know, we talked a lot about that already, um, but I would say adaptability. You know, we always want our, our, our student athletes to be coachable. And I, and I do feel like a lot of them are so ad adaptive to any situation. And then I would say just gratitude. I think with um, things being taken away last year and the uncertainty of, are, am I going to play the sport again? Am I going to be able to come back to school? I think just a lot of them, you know, were more grateful for, um, for anything that came their way. And I think we just tried to do a really good job in celebrating all the small victories, right? Because of how kind of sad and melancholy the last year has been. But we really tried to kind of be loose and have more fun uh, and really just enjoy the moment together because any time we know that it would be taken away. 
And at, at some at some point, I'm, I'm you know I'm trying to remember what we were like in August, and we talk about our first years. You know, I, resiliency is a part of it. I, but I re also remember that we had to gradually increase our numbers, right, because of COVID restrictions. So as we're gradually increase, increasing or like expanding what our practice and training sessions are looking like, I just remember going back where like we came in as a soccer program much later than we normally would, right? We would come in in the beginning of August. We came in at the end of August, couldn't start training until like early September. And what did that look like? And I just remember going through conversations where our young players were homesick. That was a reality of conversations that we were having because they, you could not connect like that, that physical piece of being part of a team. You could not connect as a group early on. Couldn't have numbers in the locker rooms, which meant that dance parties for women's soccer was out the window, right? So we then had a dance party on the field, but you know, my dancing and their dancing is very different, but when we started to increase like the numbers, you started to see our group become more comfortable. And I think that's where the resiliency came in where our younger player, players were like, oh yeah, so this is what it's supposed to look like. And as we then transferred into the spring, even though the spring was totally different, there was a comfortability. So I, there is a resiliency, there is a, buy-in piece and Carlo mentioned it before and a passion, Melissa and Kevin, we saw that come out as we were able to be more together as a team. So resiliency, I mean, Kevin uses it, has said it multiple times, has been the really biggest piece that has come out for our younger group. I, I wish soccer was a spring sport. The fall is awesome to work with the team. We had a little bit of extra time. It was so comfortable. You know, you don't have to push the push the 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 item you're working on in the day. You have extra time, and you know, it's always in, when you're in season. It's like hurry up and wait. It's like everything's got to go fast, but you have a little bit more time, and it, it it and then you get into these like you know just this channel of of just fixated on one thing, you know. In the fall, we're able to work on so many different things and be a little bit looser. So, you know, the the development of the younger player was huge. By the time we got into the spring, I felt like they were sophomores anyway. So it didn't really matter. So, you know, softball and baseball, you're very fortunate, you know, that you have that fall season to do some extra uh, work with your team. <laughs> Carlo, I actually think, I mean, as tough as this year was, I think the year, the year long model for soccer might be pushed a little bit more now. Yeah, I, I, I hope so. Because, <laughs> um, because we come, you know, we're back in, in, uh, in, in you know, six weeks or, you know, August, yeah. we're kind of getting our head back into the season. So I'm pretty excited about, I'm pretty excited about that. You know, the, the, the pro model of playing more games and training more is pretty cool. Yeah, agreed. And like you said, there's a proof of concept now, right? It kind of yeah. worked. Yeah, it did work. I mean, your only loss was to Marshall, national champion. So. It was pretty cool to see more collegiate sports on TV. You know, yeah. softball's on all day. Women's soccer was on all day. Soccer was on, all, men's soccer, baseball, lacrosse. Like, you don't have to compete with actually the pro teams. It was pretty cool to see more. Mm -hmm. And I know softball is always on and baseball is on, but for us, you know, on the soccer mm -hmm. aspect of it. I will say, um, and, and I think I might've texted you guys throughout the spring, but I thought it was, I mean, as, as tough as it was from a resource and staff and facility standpoint to have all sports go in the spring, I did feel there was a sense of true Ramily right? This spring, like we were all kind of more up to, um, up to date with who was playing when, and there was a lot of cohesion I felt in the spring. And I think we were all building off of each other's success, whether it was soccer, uh, men's soccer, uh, volleyball, basketball, baseball, you name it, you know, a water polo. And I think that was really cool this spring to see um, kind of the cohesion of the department. Cause normally, you know, we are separated in different seasons, but to have everybody go at one time, I thought was really special. And then I, I like I said, I think everyone just built off of each other's success. And the flexibility of everything, you made a great point as well earlier. We, and um, Kevin can laugh about this. So we have to schedule a game after Kevin, right? Uh, and of course, Kevin picks the day to go into two double overtime and whatever they call it, extra innings. 
for like, and he goes an extra three hours on the day. So it's really three mini games he played, right? Instead of two. Yeah. No problem. We just adapted. We quickly switched to uh, Murphy and we played against St. Francis, Pennsylvania at Murphy just about, about a half hour later. Um, it's okay. It, 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 you know, we supported each other, everybody, you know. Um, nobody, you know, lost their mind over it. It, it's, it is what it is. We were just very happy to be out there. Yeah, but the poor facility guys that were moving the wall from game to game, yeah. uh, you know, you have to give kudos to that group too for why, like, why we were so successful or why, you know, we were able to pull it off. We wouldn't have been able to without that group. And it literally took every everything and everyone to do this spring, right, with all the sports. So I think we all uh, are very grateful for the seasons we had. As crazy as and, and unusual it was, I think we're all very grateful for the support that we had this year. Well, great discussion. Really enjoyed being here. It's Fordham men's soccer head coach, Carlo Aquista, Fordham women's soccer head coach, Jessica Clinton. Fordham baseball head coach, Kevin Layton, and Fordham softball head coach, Melissa Inouye. It's our championship coaches panel. Guys, really appreciate the time, and thanks for connecting over this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.